hives. Uh, this one is a hive that that actually goes at my house. I have a yard at my house, and then I have three other out yards. And I moved it up here temporarily because I wanted. I had basically tried to unite it. I united it with another hive, <coughs> and then uh, it wasn't in the, the right spot in my yard, so I moved it up to this yard. Uh, you can do that for as little as three weeks or so and then and then you can move them back but if you move them prior to three weeks or so if you move them back to the other yard they'll the forages will go back to the old location or so I've been told uh, one exception to the rule it seems with me is that if if they're locked in the hive for three days or more and they can't get out uh, you can move them in that same yard and, and they'll reorient afterwards but uh, if you follow my YouTube videos, you know that I have a lower vent, or uh, you know, a, a lower entrance and an upper entrance in the back. <clears throat> the upper entrance grows with the hive because it's built into the inner cover. Uh, personally, I, I'm going to do a video one of these days just on inner covers because they're the most versatile piece of equipment that you can buy for your beehive. But uh, uh, last time I worked this yard, I I knew I was going to move them, so I. I shut the rear entrance which is easy to do with this hive <coughs> or my hives because all you do is slide the telescoping cover forward and it, and it closes off that entrance so that's closed I strapped it and then all I got to do is close the front entrance so what I did here this is an eight frame hive so what I did to move this hive and other hives is I modified a uh, robber screen that I that I made and basically I had built this robber screen I just took some number eight hardware cloth and put it along the top so that when I set it in the hive there and nail it on, everything is pretty tight. There are move, you know, there are moving screens you can buy that are better than this, obviously. Uh, but for the eight frame, I only have four eight frame hives, and I really, I really can't stand them anyway. So uh, I'm never going to buy any more. So I'm not going to invest any more money in eight-frame hives, and uh, they, they do look nice with the copper lids, and and they're you know they're they're attractive hives, and I like that's why I bought them in the first place. But the bee space in them just isn't correct, so uh, I just don't like them. They're, they're not correct above and below, and they're not correct side to side. So uh, anyway, you nail this screen on whatever screen you have. You can also can also just take a, a piece of that number eight hardware cloth and now they're they're sealed up now so I don't have to worry about bees getting in or out or anything like that and it obviously it rained here last night which I did which I didn't know but uh, another thing you can do is take this number eight hardware cloth and you can just stuff it in the door I like this method better because it it, uh, it completely seals it up which I like uh, you're going to get the same airflow either way, but uh, you know I just like this because it's a little, and it's also easier to get off when you get when you get to the where you're taking it, whatever B yard or wherever you're taking it to. You can just take a hive tool and, and pry that off, and they're ready to go. Uh, if you put a screen in here in the entrance, and you transport them that way, there's always a possibility of that screen coming out. But uh, I, I really haven't had that happen very often. But the bees, in getting jostled around, kind of start biting at that screen and they really want out. Whereas with this one, they tend to come out, see what's going on, and they can move around in this screen, but they're not nearly as aggressive. You can see one here. Here's a, uh, a guard that just came out to investigate you know, why somebody's pounding on our hive. So anyway, so the next thing you want to do is uh, move it to your truck. So that can be a problem, especially this time of year. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's late. It's, it's, it's October, and they should be very full. This hive is not very full. They, they've got about half their winter honey supply, I would say, maybe three quarters. So I'm just going to lift them. But, but if you're going to do more than one hive or whatever, you know, I, I would definitely invest in some type of dolly. There are some that, that come in from the side with, with arms that, that lift in the handles over here. And 
and uh, th I've never had one of those. What I use is a just a regular dolly that I got from Walter T. Kelly, and, and the same model they sell now is a dually. Uh, it's a little nose truck, and I take a California lid, if you know what that is, and I turn it upside down, I guess, and I that that gives me what I need to get the dolly underneath the hive. Then I take the hive and I put it on that California lid, and then I can lift it and move it wherever I want. But uh, in this case, I'm just gonna. It's not that heavy, and it's only one hive, and I only have to move about eight feet. So I'm going to lift them up and put them in the truck. Another thing I think that it's important to say is that uh, if you're going to transport bees. I've, I've seen videos or, or heard stories in bee magazines of people doing this, so this is why I mention it. Don't ever put a hive of bees inside a vehicle, inside the cab of a truck, and transport those bees. If you're involved in an accident, you're going to feel like a bear that just broke into a hive, except you, you don't have the pain threshold of a bear, so it's, it's going to be a bad situation. The only thing that it'll do is contain the bees, for the most part, inside the cab of your vehicle. Um, as you you know, as I said before, I strap the hive this direction, and I and then I'm going to strap them in here too. Um, and the way I've found it best, especially if you're just transporting a single hive in a pickup, is to take the strap and strap it from from this side to this side and push the hive back against the tailgate. That does a pretty good job of, of keeping it secure. And then if you, since you have it strapped here, you know, you got it strapped up, you know, vertically and horizontally. So uh, just a real quick note, transporting bees, don't ever transport them inside the cab of the vehicle uh, or you'll regret you ever saw a bee. But I'll, uh, I, I, what I'm going to do now, and I don't think I need to show you this, is I'm just going to strap this in here like I explained, and then I'll meet you back at my bee yard. My other bee yard. You see how my uh, hive was strapped to my truck. I made it home safe and sound. I'm going to do this next step real quick. I'm just going to move the truck or the hive from the truck to its permanent location. The reason I'm going to do it quick is because I had to park in order to just get close in front of these two hives and you can see all the bees flying around. They're trying to, they're doing some cleansing flights and some orientation flights and my truck is in the way. So I'm going to do this real quick. The nice thing about this method of carrying your your uh, hive body is that when you want to unload it, you just simply open the tailgate and your hive is free of all the straps and constraints. So then you can just lift it off. Okay, you can see at the entrance there, there's lots of bees crawling around there that they can't get out. Uh, and when you move a hive, you want to leave them sit for a few minutes before you uh, open up that door. And the reason is, is because they're confused and, and everything. They, they you know, uh, they could sting. I've had them sting before when i take a, taken them off. Most of the time they don't. But uh, if you give them, give them a little time and if you're really worried about it, just a little, little bit of smoke. You know you can take care of that problem so I just let them sit for five minutes or so and in the meantime what I do is I level the hive so all right you move them to your new location now this these slides have been here for a long time I know they're leveled so I don't really have to level them but what, what I do want to talk about is that you can see that there's a slight bit of movement and so what I do use are, are shims usually like cedar shims these are, I don't even know what these are some type of I don't know what they are almost like plastic but um, and I just shim I, I shim it to where there's no movement there so there we go 
Okay, so there's no movement there. I know it's 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 uh, level from side to side. Now, uh, with here's where you know what what you do may diverge from what you know what I do or what somebody else does is that this is a ventilated bottom board. And so if this if this is tilted back a little bit, it really isn't going to make a difference. The water is going to go in and it's going to drain out and then come out through these these cracks here. Uh, the water is not going to be that much of a problem. Of course, I, I always tend to, to lean my hives a little bit forward so that the rear end is, is a little higher than the front end. And that way water never runs in the hive at all. And uh, these hives are particularly hard to figure out if they're level from side to side, which is the most important direction. The reason is because if you have a little forward or backward you know, problem with your hives, this direction, and this actually is showing that the rear end needs to come up a little bit to be level. So I'm going to have to raise the rear end a little bit. And uh, it looks like I already had the equipment to do that. So this is an old solid bottom board. And now, and now it looks like the rear end is about three eighths of an inch taller, higher than the front end. That's that's level. And that's good because I don't want water running in the hive. It's also stable from left to right. Here you can you can go by this little thing and it's it's showing it's showing pretty level. It might be better to go here. But the reason you want it level from side to side, from left to right, is because when you're dealing with a double deep, it's not a big deal. But when you put five honey supers on there, it's going to lean one way or the other. And so you want to make sure that it's level before you ever get there. These have these are concrete pavers, so I don't have to worry too much about you know one side sinking into the ground and, and creating a further problem or anything like that. Um, but I do have to worry about wind here. Where I'm at, it's, it's pretty windy. So uh, you want to make sure that the, the hives are, are level, front to back and left to right. And like I say, you want the rear end a little tilted, a little, little higher, just a little, you know, the, the quarter inch, three eighths of an inch, something that's going to create a situation where water runs out of the hive and not into the hive. If you have a solid bottom board, that is absolutely critical because you'll get water running into the hive and then pooling in there. With a ventilated bottom board, it's not as critical. So, okay, once you've leveled the hive and, and done all of that, by the way, this, you know, straps, once you pull that rear end off the ground a little bit, it'll just slide out. But uh, once you've done all that, you do need to release the bees. And that's what I like about moving them in the morning or night, is that you can immediately release them. If you move them in the middle of the day, say with nets around them, you basically have to wait until they go back in the hive. Uh, at least it's best if you don't want dripping to do so. But to remove this, you can do it nice and easy. Just pry one in. Try the other. Get off nice and gentle. And the bees will start their orientation flights. And that's really all there is to it. The hive is basically moved, and you'll start seeing them doing their orientation flights. One thing I want to warn you is you can see there's still, it was 41 degrees in my other bee yard, and it's 50 here, so they warmed up pretty quick. But in an hour or two, maybe 15, 20 minutes, it's whatever it takes to get the right temperature. You'll see bees doing that, coming out and flying around in figure eights, and, and you'll see a lot of them doing that. So don't be surprised if, that, if uh, that does happen. It will happen, in fact. And don't think that they're you know, upset or anything. They're just orienting to their new hive. Another thing you want to do, if you, if you can, is slide the lid back. Now, mine are... you can just slide back uh, because I have them in a winter position already so I know there's not any bees 
in the inner cover, but if you have to break it loose a little bit uh, and your inner cover is in the normal summer position, if you don't want to squish bees, it's a good idea to take that cover off, shake it, do the same thing with the inner cover, and then slide it back. But mine's already in the winter position, so there's no way bees can be up at, between the telescoping cover and the inner cover, so I just can slide that back. And now the rear entrance is open, the front entrance is open, and they're done. This hive has got their permanent home now. That's a robber bee, by the way. That's a robber that just tried to get in there, and they shoved her away. And I see some robbers in the yard around the other hives, but they're not being very effective at all. So, anyway, until next time.